I'm Ellis Martin. In this segment of the Ellis Martin Report, I travel to a place that I spent a great deal of my life in, Albuquerque, New Mexico, to sit in with KKOB talk show host Brandon Vogt and my good friend Pavlos Panagopoulos of MyFinancialSense.com. Many years ago, I believed that the greater Albuquerque metro area and beyond, including Bernalillo, Valencia, Sandoval, and Santa Fe counties, would be prime areas for global economic development. Given the climate, culture, resources, workforce, and the general positive environment for technological innovation. It's a prime target for a multinational light industrial zone and a city of the future based around that development, specifically Berlin, New Mexico in Valencia County, 40 minutes south of Albuquerque along I-25 with its amazing infrastructure. Let's listen into that conversation just last month in New Mexico with talk show host Brandon Vogt and Pavlos Panagopoulos. The following program is brought to you in living color. World of fake news, hidden agendas, and spin. This is the final fortress of free speech. This is BV Today on 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. All right, it's BV Today, 96.3 News Radio, KKOB. Thanks for being with us on this Wednesday afternoon, and we're going to talk about the resource wars. And uh, this is going to be a, a great topic to get into. I want to welcome in Pavlos Panagopoulos from Satera Advisor Networks and, of course, MyFinancialSense.com. And Pavlos brought some guests again this time. And Ellis Martin is with us as well today. Hi, Ellis. I am here. Thank you yes. very much for having me, Brandon and Pavlos. Appreciate <laughs> right. it. Good yes. to be back in Albuquerque. Yes. And Ellis.gold. That's where you can find the, the Ellis Martin Report and all of the information that can be had on you and that sort of thing. And you're quite familiar with Albuquerque, right? Well, I first set my foot in the Duke City in 1974 in January, so almost 50 years ago. My uh -huh. dad was transferred out here to run a few radio stations in the yeah. engineering aspect of uh -huh. the world, and my sister and I uh, moved yeah. out to New Mexico from upstate New York, and she's in the studio today. Yeah. She just popped in. <laughs> That's great. Actually, Dan Martin, his dad was one of the people that put the towers up there on Sandia Mountain. So, oh, wow. Isn't that yeah. kind of cool? They, they, their family goes way back in the radio roots and uh, uh -huh. uh, also with 94 Rock. He was one of the DJs. And so yeah. Ellis now does his own podcast. I call him the Joe Rogan of resource information. <laughs> he's, he's got well, 3.2 2 million subscribers. Yeah. And yeah. again, uh, we're going to be talking about resources mm -hmm. and the future resource wars that uh, might take place here in our oh, uh, yeah. global situation that's going yeah. on here that we're yeah. finding that in the world. Yeah, definitely. And and that's where we're going to start, Pavlos and, and Ellis. I mean, when you look at what's going on in the world, you know, we had we had Ukraine and then uh, we have the conflict in Israel and Hamas and now Guyana, which not a lot of people know about what's going on down there, but it's, it's pretty fascinating what's happening in South America. Well, it's really fascinating, Brandon. I'm glad you brought Guyana up. It is an oil-rich country. It recently became an oil-rich company, which means the oil's always been there, but they've developed it within the last five, ten years uh -huh. very nicely. It's an English-speaking country in the Caribbean. It was originally a, a British Commonwealth country, and evidently uh, Maduro in, in Venezuela doesn't have enough oil, yeah, <laughs> or so he thinks, and they've got a long-standing dispute that uh, that territory, which is two-thirds of Guyana, is there, so it remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. What will happen in that part? And, of and the world. they're they're going in. They're they're just trying to annex that off, annex part of another country off for themselves. They did that in um, Armenia. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Ar Azerbaijan invaded Armenia, and uh, hundred thousand Armenians are yeah. now out of homes. Yeah. So, uh, great book. If anybody wants out of our listeners out there, the end of the world is just the beginning. The end of globalization. Peter Zion and talking yeah. about the uh, natural resource wars. Uh -huh. um, he predicted that what's going to happen in Ukraine almost five years ago. Oh wow! He said uh, yeah. Ukraine and Russia. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys. They are no natural barriers between the two countries. There are no mountains or rivers or oceans. And uh, there's a long standing you know basically uh yeah. you know basically they have a long standing uh, conflict there mm -hmm. for years and years it goes back thousands of years and of course ukraine has a lot of food resources oh yeah and yeah. russia has a Bread lot of basket. natural gas mm -hmm. and the natural gas was going you know we all heard the word burisma yeah. we've all heard the about burisma company. and, yeah. and uh, what's going on with uh, yeah. the different uh, administrations here so 
a lot's going on in the world. And yeah. again, it has a lot to do with resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And Guyana, nobody really have talked about Guyana since, uh, you know, the, uh, the the Jonestown massacre decades ago and now back in the news. And it's just interesting to me that they just found oil there, you know, all this time. And then, you know, very recent history that uh, that they were able to strike oil there. Yeah, Venezuela, you know, they got such a great economy. I, I think they think they can probably manage their oil resources better than uh, mm-hmm. Exxon or Chevron, you yeah. know, some of the, the likes of that. So, again, yeah. you're going to see a lot of these countries that have these natural resources. They're looking at repatriating those resources. We saw that happen in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, we may see that uh, go in other places, even um, Chile. They have yeah. a new president, and he's talking about confiscating some of the Lithium mm-hmm. deposits there in Chile. Oh, wow. And so, how do they say that, Brandon? Follow the money. Oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Follow the money. <laughs> yeah. And Ellis, Ellis Martin, a renowned resource company promoter, and Pavlos brought him along today. So, so what, what are you in town for, Ellis, other than to hang out with a, a lot of your, your friends that, uh, that you've known for a while here? Well, unfortunately, I won't be able to hang out with a lot of my friends that I've known for a while. It's a very quick trip. Yeah. I came in because I had an idea about 10 years ago, about 20 years ago, and originally 40 years ago, that New Mexico was prime territory for a great megalithic industrial park okay. and a community, yeah. either around the Albuquerque Airport in the Economic Free Zone or in Valencia County around Belen. The infrastructure is here now. It wasn't 20 years ago. It wasn't yeah. 40 years ago. Yeah. This is a great place with a great workforce. We have resources here, and it's, it's prime real estate, really, for a global community to, to be set up. There's mm-hmm. been no global community here. Wow. Why not New Mexico, yeah. where you can actually get things done if you if you have a purpose in mind? Mm-hmm. And the thought was to involve uh, some sovereign wealth funds around the world and bring some green technology here, like you already have in Berlin. You've got yeah. this big 1.8 million square foot complex that's funded by a Singaporean company, I believe, mm-hmm. for yeah. production of solar panels, and that's a billion dollars into the economy over there so why not duplicate that by 10 or 100 yeah if the communities will support it and by that i mean really connecting with the tribes in the area making sure they have equity in it and connecting with the local politicians and as far as politics is concerned Mm -hmm. everybody wins with something like this Mm -hmm. everybody wins on all sides we bring money into the state we bring people into the state we grant a Employment visas, H-1, if you will, and H-4s for the family. So all these yeah. companies that build cars or in the aerospace industry, they can or, or batteries can come in from mm-hmm. Korea, they can come in from Japan, from Malaysia, from Singapore, from from Indonesia, and bring their families here. We have yeah. schools to support that. They can apprentice our amazing workforce, which needs more knowledge. Mm-hmm. We can put some of the immigrants who've come into the country with, with skills and, and, and know-how to work. Yeah. We can give them jobs and let them earn that citizenship. And so keep people here to work because that's yes, a major absolutely. problem we have in new mexico we're hemorrhaging our kids because they're they're leaving as soon as uh, they get educated and many of them are leaving for education and, and they're just staying well the biggest thing brandon and pavlos is to is to turn that narrative around mm-hmm. and this state needs help and i say that with love yeah. i have family here mm-hmm. my sister's in the room my daughter and grandchildren are in this in this city yeah and this is a good part of my life i moved to california about 32 years ago this is a family state to me it's a family state to everybody that lives here and loves it and swears by it yeah. and but there's always been an economic issue over here and i think we can turn that around yeah we can all do it not mm-hmm. me not just pavlos not and you brandon you're a voice we can all get together and turn this around mm-hmm. why, yes. new, why new mexico but what, what when you came up with this idea years ago what was it about new well, mexico that here. you thought that that this, this is where this might work at i lived here and i thought mm-hmm. the climate's the best there's four seasons here yeah. the weather's really good and also, it's a great space for a backlot, which I don't think exists right now. You know mm-hmm. what a backlot is, yeah. studio backlot. Why not put that in Berlin yeah. and develop a film community over mm-hmm. there? Yeah. One of the things that I did, I'm tuning my own horn, but I'm a salesman, so I guess I have to do that. But <laughs> I, a group of us, there were about a dozen of us that back in 1990 lobbied the state as part of the Screen Actors Guild and a few of the producers around here, like, like Dave Roberts and some others, to remove the gross receipts tax yeah. for the movie industry. And that brought a flood of of work in here for everybody yeah. but it's not enough mm-hmm. but it, it's it's a big industry now we have here. netflix yeah yeah you have netflix big, big print. and we have google and we have uh you know Meta. we're yeah we have amazon and mm-hmm. um we also uh big uh, corporate uh, uh contributed to the blend chamber of commerce is facebook mm-hmm. um and again these companies like uh ellis was saying they need energy 
They need energy to run their data processing. And our energy here in New Mexico is relatively inexpensive. When you look at solar, wind, and you and I know the wind doesn't always blow and the sun yeah. doesn't always shine. Mm-hmm. So we got lots of natural gas. Yeah. And so those uh, power plants keep going all the time. And, you know, it's pennies for mm-hmm. that energy. And that energy can drive other industries yeah. and other economies. Yeah. The opportunity is there. And New Mexico is situated perfectly for it. Ellis Martin is with us. You can find the Ellis Martin Report and all sorts of resources. Ellis.gold, Pavlos Panagopoulos, Satera Advisor Networks, MyFinancialSense.com. And you guys are heading down to Berlin because it's the, the best of Valencia County tonight, Pavlos. And congratulations. In 11th year in a row, you've been named Advisor of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Lucky for yeah. me, I'm the only advisor in Belen, no. right? Yeah, it'd be bad if I came in second place, right? No, there, there are other advisors. There's, in other, ones. No, there's other ones. There's other But you're the best. Thank that's you. That's for thank sure. You. And he's a very handsome man. Yeah. Yes, I've got a face for radio. <laughs> well, you want it because of the talent competition every year, right? Yes, That's it's why. voted by the members. It's actually voted by the readers of yeah. Valencia County News Bulletin. So oh, every yeah. year, best the Mexican food, best chili plate, uh-huh. best burrito. Yeah. That's great. So, and and that, you're going down there tonight. Yes. That's tonight. Yes. And we'll be down mm-hmm. there with the Chamber of Commerce as well. We're going to go visit with Rona mm-hmm. Espinosa, Executive Director. Ellis is going to visit with her, yeah. talking about this opportunity. He has some um, Asianic funds Mm -hmm. and also uh, some sovereign wealth funds from the Middle East that are looking at investing in New Mexico, bringing, you know, solar, bringing also wind, turbines, you know, production and a lot of uh, businesses Mm -hmm. here, like a a nice business park that we can build here. And again, uh, these countries are looking for places to go. And let me ask the listeners out there, this will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. The biggest construction site in the world is in Chandler, Arizona. Oh, wow. And who is building that construction site? Mm-hmm. Taiwan Semiconductor. Oh, wow. They're all wanting to come yeah. to the United States because we have a stable, safe country government mm-hmm. and we have two big oceans on both sides yeah. to protect us. Yeah. And we have the natural resource people. So we have people mm-hmm. from southern part of the world, whatever, coming to, to immigrating to the United States. Yeah. As long as, of course, it's orderly. Mm-hmm. We have the human resources we have the wind, the solar, the natural gas. Yeah. So the United States definitely looks to be on the upward yeah. trend, and New Mexico and the middle part of the United States mm-hmm. even better. Oh yeah, New Mexico is very you know, situated perfectly for something like this because you see investments going on in Wyoming and in Idaho. Why not New Mexico as well? Well, I've been to all those places. And by the way, mm-hmm. Idaho is a great state for doing business in the mining sector yeah. and for industry in general. I was just there a couple of weeks ago, met with the governor. Over here in New Mexico, you have. And I would like to congratulate the last few administrations here because the infrastructure here is amazing. Ever since 1974, when I first came here, Mm -hmm. the improvement in the last 20 years alone has been wonderful. You've got a lot of work done with I-25 and I-40. The rail system now going directly to Berlin. It's been that way for a while. I believe former Governor Richardson was was responsible for opening up those roads. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing from a mining perspective is... Is it economic? Does the infrastructure support development? It's all here. We just need everybody to Mm -hmm. realize that it's here and to cooperate and work together to help make it even more attractive. Yeah, and that's kind of the sales pitch that New Mexico has to have to attract some of the other investors, right? Could we do a better job of getting our name out there that we're available to? Well, you're doing it with regard to tourism. Uh I see that at the airports in L.A. Yes, the state of New Mexico could do a better job getting the word out with regard to expansion and business development over here. That doesn't mean they haven't done a good job. Mm -hmm. I believe they have, but it can always be better. And the movie industry is an example that you were involved in that. And now we have Netflix here. And a lot of what you did several years ago, back in the 90s, brought that. So I'm hoping that some of the things you're going to do here in the future is going to bring us some industrial jobs and some jobs, you know, that like the movie industry that will be high paying jobs Mm -hmm. and provide our children able to work and live here in New Mexico and not go elsewhere. Keep them here. Keep them here. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's not just me, Pavlos, and I want to thank you for that, but it's people like you. It's it's a group of us, people like Brandon, for giving us a voice today because I know Brandon is very, very passionate about the state of New Mexico, and it's an everything. It's an everybody party, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we got the the reports from the International Energy Agency that, you know, countries where 75% of the energy being used in the world anticipates that demand is going to double by just 2035. And that, again, puts New Mexico kind of in a in a really unique spot here that uh, we can be kind of a front runner on this yes. the situation with the increased demand. This month, the United States produced more energy than any country in the world. Yeah. So in spite of 
what's going on regulations wise or our administration, you know, we've unleashed the energy monster, I guess you could say that you know, it's getting out there and, and getting going and our energy. Now we're exporting energy to the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Spanagopoulos with us from Satera Advisor Networks and also Ellis Martin, ellis.gold for the Ellis Martin Report. And these guys are heading on to Berlin a little bit later. But we wanted to talk some about mining stocks, Ellis, and kind of the track that, that you have with that. Well, I've been circling around the mining world for about 25 years now, and mm -hmm. most of the companies that sponsor the Ellis Martin Report are mining or resource in nature, oil and gas, gold, precious metals, space metals, battery metals, and there's a real opportunity right now, potentially. I don't want to say absolutely because I can't. Yeah. I'm not allowed to in that sector because the last two years have been terrible for mining stocks. Not for gold, not for copper, but for the equities themselves, there's a real chance if you're smart and you do your homework, that there's perhaps a 5, 10 to 20 time return on your investment. There's no guarantee. And if you don't know what you're doing, there's a good chance you'll lose your money. Mm -hmm. Good to have a good manager, right? You need a good manager. And Pablo, yeah. you're it. And <laughs> Advisor of the year. He's Thank the you. advisor of the year in Berlin mm -hmm. and doing very well in yeah. Berlioz County, I understand. But if you have any questions about specifically about investing in resource stocks, and if they're penny stocks, that's where you can find the most, the most return on your dollar if you are successful in that area. It's safer to be above a dollar. It's safer to be in the dollar to five dollar zone with regard to resource stock. You want to invest in some of the foreign exchanges and specifically I mean Brandon, the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange or the TSX Venture Exchange. And you can do that. You need to connect with a financial advisor who can get you situated. And yeah. I happen to be sitting in the room with the lovely and very handsome Pablos. His office number is 505-828-4068. That's 505-828-4068. There, you did it. Give me yeah. the $10. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for that plug. But, yes, definitely we tell people to be careful, you know, in buying, uh, as I call it, what Mark Twain called a hole in the ground with a liar on top. Uh -huh. you got to have a good manager, and yeah. you got to know what you're doing these resource stocks. So we definitely look for the good managers. And like Alice Mm -hmm. said there's opportunities in resource stocks some of those stocks are so cheap mm -hmm. and these companies are going to do a lot through m a merger and acquisitions we've already mm -hmm. seen it in the oil industry with the likes of chevron buying out emerita s the likes of exxon buying out pioneer group mm -hmm. and yeah. so we're seeing a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on and with the recent downturn on the price of the stocks not the earnings yeah because the earnings are doing great and they're paying huge dividends. Matter of fact, some of them are considered the dividend aristocrats, some of the large resource companies, because they're very consistent in paying dividends. And as prices go up, so too does the minerals mm -hmm. and so too do the dividends. And usually yeah. stocks go up as well. Mm -hmm. So we consider resource stocks as being kind of more defensive oriented investments than we do what I call pie in the sky technology companies, oh, yeah. you know, that they're basically counting their earnings on eyeballs. I'd mm -hmm. rather count my earnings in dollars. Not yeah. eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we started you know, talking about Guyana and what's going on in South America with Venezuela. And it just looks like we'll probably see more and more of that happening. Countries positioning themselves, trying to get into other countries, like what's going on in South America, to find resources. I mean, and there'll be got, armed conflicts. Yeah. So weapons companies are going to be good investments, too, because mm -hmm. these companies are arming it. these countries are arming themselves to the teeth because these resources are very valuable yeah. and like i said we've seen that in the past you know history does repeat itself if anybody wants to look at a great book it's called the fourth turning by basically the gentleman named strauss he coined the word millennial yeah. and he says every 85 90 years we go through a fourth turning we have a contentious time contentious election and every 85 years people forget what happened 85 years ago and so we have this fourth turning going on and a lot of the listeners out there are wondering why things are so contentious in the world well it's just like the weather bv you know we have winter summer fall yeah. spring and now we're in winter and mm -hmm. according to the fourth turning winter will not be over until the year 2039 okay so Brace pack yourself, a lunch. Bro. Yeah, pack a lunch and, <laughs> and get ready to put some money in resource stocks, right? Yeah. Because those resource stocks are going to keep you nice and warm during this uh, winter season. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I, if you don't mind, I'd like to mention that really what you should look for are companies with great management teams, great projects, money in the bank, and who possibly may be undergoing in the near future M&As. Mergers and acquisitions. I yeah. know of two copper companies right now that won't tell you that they're doing that, but it's absolutely going to happen. They'll be taken out by some majors. And they're not generating any revenue. They're in the research and development phase. Wow. And as wow. big companies, they're looking for those smaller companies that are in research and development stage 
because those companies already spent the money oh, yeah. doing all the homework, mm-hmm. and they're just, you know, e- even look at the Permian Basin. Yeah. Nobody ever thought, BV, that the Permian Basin would be this big. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying the Permian Basin and the uh, basically that area in there, the Bakken and all that, is going to be bigger than Saudi Arabia. Wow. When it comes to producing energy. Yeah. And so we're already seeing that happening now with the United States this month, mm-hmm. surpassing all countries. We are now are the number one producer of energy in the whole wow. world. That's in incredible. spite of our administration, that, that, in spite yeah. of our uh, it, regulations, it, it, in spite of canceling the exactly. pipeline. Yeah. yeah. This it, could be just, New Mexico as well, the fifth mm-hmm. largest state geographically in the country. It can happen here. Yeah. And one of the biggest energy producers. Yeah. It is happening here. Mm-hmm. Definitely is. Of course, we'll start to see the world become a little bit more dangerous, too, because we have this demand for electricity and energy. What do you guys see with that? Well, conflict. Well, I think that conflict is driven by Russia and China right now, who are pushing all the buttons all over the world, including Venezuela, including Guyana, including Ukraine. Including the Middle East, including I could go on and on. And on. This on is Armenia. This, mm-hmm. is, this is all by design, and it's all about resources. It's all about control. It's all about money. But I think in the end, democracy and freedom tend to win out, and these dictatorships and totalitarian regimes don't seem to win in the end. However, I believe in everybody getting along. You know, we've got to live. We've got to deal with China. Mm -hmm. At some point, whether it's today or years in the future, we have to work together. We have to work together with China. At first, we're not going to do that. But at some point, we must. Mm -hmm. And China's conflict is Chandler, Arizona's gain, right? Exactly. Because Taiwan Semiconductor goes, gosh, maybe we should relocate to a safer Mm -hmm. country and (laughs) between two oceans. I mean, that's what's happening. And, Uh And these sovereign wealth funds that you represent Ellis are wanting to say, uh, we want to invest in a stable, democratic, capitalistic country mm-hmm. with two big oceans surrounding it. Yeah. Guess what? There's only one in the world <laughs> that fits that mode, and that's yeah. the United States. Well, yeah. they want to be up here. They want to participate in our aerospace industry. They want to be doing light manufacturing. The automotive industry wants to be here. And the funds in Korea and Japan are looking to be here as well. And it's even mm-hmm. called, you all. everybody's heard about offshoring. Yeah. And now we talk about onshoring. What it's really going to be more about is nearshoring. Okay. And nearshoring is what? Mexico. Mexico now yeah. is surpassing China as one of our biggest partners. Yeah. So, again, you give us a little flack, mm-hmm. guess what? We vote with our feet. Yeah. We move to Chandler, Arizona, right? Uh-huh. If you start rattling your saber, we're going to go somewhere safer. Yes. If you rattle your saber in Guyana, guess where we're going to go? Mm-hmm. We're going to go to the Permian Basin, and we're going to start drilling and fracking. Yeah. So money never sleeps. It mm-hmm. finds the safest and most profitable place that it can make money. Yeah. And yeah. that's what Ellis does. Ellis mm-hmm. finds these companies and these resource companies that are looking for capital and wanting to develop themselves. So if you get a chance to listen to the Ellis Martin report, uh, you'll hear some really neat company stories and you know companies that are out there taking risk. Mm-hmm. Again, it's not my cup of tea for my clients, yeah. but for those who have got uh, are not faint at heart, mm-hmm. definitely listen to the Ellis Martin Show because yeah. there's some great opportunities there. Yeah, Ellis.gold. And Pavlos, you mentioned the expanding middle class, but that's not just here in the U.S., all over the world. And in some of those untapped markets in India and Southeast Asia where you're going to have a lot of people that have more money now. Well, they're the end-user countries, right? Mm-hmm. And Australia is feeding them a lot of resources. Over there, I was just in Sydney a few weeks ago, and the Australians are very aggressive all over the world. So they may be some of our partners here in, in North America, in New Mexico. We don't know. I'm not saying it for a fact, but the machinery, the tools, the manpower, the, the money, the resources, it's here. Let's just get it done because the electrification of the world doesn't stop. It's just only continuous. We have this mandate for everyone to drive EVs. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, right now we have about a billion people out of the 8 billion people in the world in the middle class. Yeah. It's anticipated, this is the people up in Santa Fe, Thornburg Funds, they talked to us about it is anticipated by the year 2030 that there will be 3.8 billion more people in the middle class. Wow. So the middle, the emerging market is going to go from about 0.8 billion in the middle class to 3.8 billion in the middle class by the year 2030. Yeah. Can you imagine how much electricity those people oh, yeah. need? Oh, how yeah. many EVs they're going to need? How many gasoline power Cadillacs they're going to need? Oh, yeah. So the growth is going to be here. Mm-hmm. And everything we're talking about now has to do with inflation. Yeah. When we talk about limited resources and demand, we're going to see inflation be part of the story for a long time to come. Yeah. And I'll let Ellis kind of chime in mm-hmm. there a little bit. Yeah. It's a supply and demand issue, of course. And there's only 10 producing compromises on the market right now. We need another 50. 
and one got taken offline, I believe, in Panama just recently. Mm. And this is a problem. In five years, we're going to have a real resource problem. If we don't see hyperinflation now, and I'm not sure if we will or not, I know we have in the last three years. There's no doubt about it. If we don't see it now, we will in five years as the cost of these materials continues to rise and rise and rise because everybody wants the same thing. And there's a, mm-hmm. there's a limited supply. I don't think there's a limited resource. No. But nobody's really mining it like mm-hmm. we should. And yeah. we have a lot of conflicts, like even talking a little bit about Afghanistan. You and I are talking offline about Afghanistan. So give us a little bit about, you know, what Afghanistan had and the natural resource, the rare earth minerals that Afghanistan had. And that's gone offline, too. Mm-hmm. Well, it has gone offline to the Chinese, and there's a lot of rare earth minerals and metals over there in Afghanistan. And that's all I'm going to say. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, enjoy your time in Berlin tonight. And and again, Ellis, you're out there. You're looking. Well, you've got some investors. And t- just kind of recap what what's going on in Berlin and kind of the idea that you have. Well, again, it's an idea I've had for 5, 10, 20, 30 years. In fact, I took it to some associates in England about 15, 16 years ago, and it's way too soon. And that's really developing Valencia County as, and yeah. making it a, a real center for international industrial growth light industry in a green sustainable way yeah sustainable community making sure that again the local population has jobs that the infrastructure is built the tribes in the area have an equity position in all of this so that everybody wins there's enough abundance in the earth to really feed everybody on the planet and clothe them and house them mm-hmm. yeah and uh pavlos again congratulations advisor of the year Best of Valencia County tonight. You got to do your your little song and dance here. Yes, yes. Securities Investment Advisory Services are offered through Satera Advisor Networks, and Satera Advisor Networks is a member of the Securities Investors Protection Corporation. Thank you, Ellis. Always great having you on and being on the radio with you. Your professional demeanor is always great. I learn a lot from you. And uh, Brandon, yeah. I wish everybody happy New Year to everybody here at KKOB yeah. and Avery. Thank you for being um, helping Brandon all these time. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot to put up with, and of course, my lovely wife Nikki is here with us. Oh, yeah. Today, so we Rich appreciate Nikki. Nikki as well. Yeah. But again, thank you to everybody at KKOB and be safe when you're out there driving. Yeah, Pavlos Panagopoulos, the Terra Advisor Networks, MyFinancialSense.com, and the Ellis Martin Report, Ellis.Gold. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us. We've been listening into a conversation with KKOB's Brandon Vogt and MyFinancialSense.com's Pavlos Panagopoulos in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Questions, comments, find me at Ellis.Gold. I'm Ellis Martin.